Road to Emmaus. My name is Daniel Vallis from InformedChristians.com, a website ministry devoted to discerning current events from a Christian and biblical perspective. This is a warning, but it is not a prediction. I do not know the future, but I can show you the patterns and types that are coming together right now and help us gain an understanding of the times. We've seen a lot going on right now. We find ourselves still in the Passover week, a lot of Passover events still going on, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, that's still going on for several more days. There's a lot of patterns and types and shadows still in play, and we have the expectation of Christ being revealed during this time. So yesterday on the 18th, we saw the completion of the Day of Atonement, in a sense, Hebrews 9, when he had finished rising from the dead and ascended to the Father as well. So today, on the 19th, we find ourselves at another important time, and there's still several shadows, important ones, over the days ahead. So, it is a roller coaster of emotions. We are weary and tired, and our spirit groaneth within us, and we are ready to leave. But, we must keep watching. We must make sure we are ready. And so right now, we find ourselves at a very important time, during the post-hours just after the road to Emmaus. And this is a very important time, because this time... In these hours, and also in the days ahead, is when Christ revealed himself to his disciples. He had completed his work, but now he is going to be revealing himself to his disciples several different instances, and in very important ways too as well. We are familiar with the road to Emmaus, so I'm not going to go over it in detail, but you can find the entire account in Luke 24. Starting verse 13, it is interesting that on the same day, the same day that Christ rose from the dead and the woman visited the tomb and all that, On the 18th day was the road to Emmaus. So two of them were walking to the village called Emmaus. And it was about the evening time and they came across Jesus. And he explained to them and rehearsed to them the scripture and prophecies that had been leading up to the events that they saw. You see, they were very depressed. They had a big expectation. Why didn't things happen? We saw everything coming together and we had this big expectation and then nothing happened. And from their perspective, he was dead and it was all over and they were just ready to give up. But Christ came alongside them and he rehearsed the material that they had seen over the past few days and said, this is prophecy. This was all coming together. Do not lose sight of this. This is what was happening. This is what the Bible told us would happen. And in a sense, that's what we've been looking at over the past few days. And that is why I keep reminding you, definitely check out the PDF resources and the booklets and the posters and material that we have in the Exodus 2 section on the website. The link is in the description box. There is no way I can condense all this information into a video. You have to read the material. I had a wonderful time of fellowship with a family just yesterday, and I was explaining and going through just the booklet with them. And it took over four hours. There is so much material coming together right now. We must, just like the road to Emmaus, right now when we're down and we don't know what's going on, but we still see things have happened, we need to rehearse and re-examine what has been happening and see God's hand through it all and reassure ourselves and our faith and build it up and encourage each other to that. Things, incredible things are happening right now that have caught our attention. And just because we don't know how they are coming together, we can still see that they are coming together. So we must stay ready and vigilant. And by rehearsing the matter, we can keep rekindling the flame and keeping the matter and information on our mind. Because Satan is going to be working overtime with doubt during this time and depression and emotions and all that. So let us look to what scripture has pointed us to. That will be where we can rest in. And as we see events unfold in the days ahead and even the shadows and patterns, let us always rehearse the matter and keep it forefront on our mind. And that can build our faith, the shield of faith, the armor of God. And that can deflect the arrows of doubt that Satan is going to try to throw at us during this time as well. There's so much coming together. So please, please, please rehearse the material. Look it over and ask the Lord for wisdom and strength to stay strong during this time. We've seen so many patterns coming together, and this is just a sampling of them, of how they're coming together at this time, because it's been an incredible story of shadows and patterns that has been acted out for us, and is still currently being acted out for us, of the grand work of God and His work of redemption that stretches all the way back to the Garden of Eden. When we look at just the patterns that have happened over the past few weeks, we see so many parallels of how Christ was weaving the stories of Esther and Purim and the king and the scepter 
and being wise and being ready and purified and the king coming for his queen, the queen going to the king, redemption, first fruits, atonement. So many shadows and patterns are being woven in just the past few days coming to a culmination. We see the events becoming stronger and stronger. And we see even more weaving the Psalm 22 passage, which is read during the time of Esther and Purim and all that, talking about, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Ties directly to Passover and the redemptive work. Christ was redeeming his bride, Esther, the one who is as beautiful as the morning star. And we talk about all this in the booklet, so rehearse the material so you can realize and be refreshed of what is coming together right now. What is the work that God is doing right now? Because if we're not careful... Satan can allow doubt to come into our mind and just say, ah, this was nothing. Just go on your, with your life, Peter. Go back to your fishing. Go back to your boats. Just forget all this stuff. No, God is doing incredible work right now that he's drawing our attention to. So we must rehearse the matter. The Song of Solomon passage that we've been looking at, that is read and sung during this time of Passover or on the Sabbath time during that. These are all deliberately put in Scripture, and the timing is deliberate because it all goes together. This is the time that he redeemed his bride. This is the time that he's coming back for his bride. This was his first coming, but it's also going to be his second coming. The entire month is the month of redemption. There's over a week of Passover events. We're in a very large, important, and weighty time prophetically, so we must be alert and vigilant. So just a few hours after the resurrection events was the road to Emmaus, and they started walking, and it was toward the evening, so there is an overlap, and if you read the entire story, it goes even into today, where we are now, in the late evening, is where many events happen. These events are still ongoing, and even over the days ahead, when you read the scripture, he revealed himself several times to his disciples. So that is what we are expecting right now. We are expecting the Son of Man to be revealed, so we are still in a great expectation of that. I cannot show you a day or hour, but all I can tell you is we are in the days when we would most expect this to happen. So let us watch because the Lamb, the Scepter, the Lion of Judah, the King is coming for his watching bride, those who are ready and those who have prepared themselves for their King. We see the celestial clock almost every night in the sky telling us that time is winding down. We have seen the celestial signs bring our attention to this Purim and Passover time. And really, this is where they've stopped. There are no major, significant, visible signs that I've seen any time soon. This is where they stopped. They have brought our attention to Purim and this time because it is very important. When we think back to the Garden of Eden, this has been God's desire for the redemptive work because this is the crux of creation. He wanted to fellowship with his creation. And even Genesis talks about how God himself walked in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. This was so important. This is the desire of his heart. He wants to fellowship with his creation. And we're reminded how even Abraham told his son Isaac in Genesis 22, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. The redemptive work that Christ did on the cross was God. Jesus was God coming to reconcile his creation to himself, to redeem his creation to himself. He provided himself a lamb. And many times Jesus drew the disciples to the Garden of Gethsemane as a wonderful picture because this is what he wants to remind them. Going back to the Garden of Eden, this is the fellowship that he wants with his creation. He wants to spend time with us. He wants to interact with us. He loves us so much that he became the Lamb. We saw him as just the scepter, but he was the King, God. On the road to Emmaus, Jesus was rehearsing the prophecy going back to Moses. And saying, this is what's going to happen. There's going to be a lamb. There's going to be a redemption. And he rehearsed the whole matter to him. Basically said, you are at this time. This happened. And you're still right in the midst of it too as well. And it's amazing. After they reached Emmaus and he broke bed and disappeared. And they realized, wow, this was Jesus. He rose from the dead. And so they traveled back to Jerusalem. Several more hours. This was happening on the early part of the 19th. Late in the evening. They returned back to Jerusalem after dinner, and they came in verse 33, and they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together, and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and has appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way, and how he was known of them in breaking of bread. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them, and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. We are in this exact same time, hours after Emmaus. Let us rehearse the matter of what has been going on around us, why God has called our attention to this time. 
why he has been pointing things out to us. Christ is going to be revealed soon to those who are ready. But it's interesting that one disciple was not there. That was Thomas. And the Bible says, And after eight days again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands. And reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. He realized that the promise of Abraham that God would send himself a lamb to redeem his creation. He realized how true it was. Jesus Christ was the lamb. Jesus was his God. Come to reconcile his creation to himself. This is the good news. The gospel. And as the disciples and children and bride of Christ, let us be ready. Let us be full of faith. Let us rehearse the matter. Let us look at what he's been showing us so we can build up our faith, so we can have the shield of faith during this time and not be faithless like Thomas. Let us be found faithful when Christ returns, when he reveals himself a second time. And we have high expectation of that during this time. So let us continue to watch. Song of Solomon 2, 8. The voice of my beloved... Behold, he cometh leaping upon the mountains, skipping upon the hills. My beloved is like a roe, or a young heart. Behold, he standeth behind our wall. He looketh forth at the windows, showing himself through the lattice. My beloved spake, and said unto me, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. For lo, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, the time of the singing of birds is come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree putteth forth her green figs, and the vines with the tender grape give a good smell. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Christ is looking through the lattice, the windows of heaven even now, to see the bride getting herself ready. What does he see? Are we making ourselves ready? Are we making ourselves ready for the king? Are we living like a queen, fit for the king? Christ is watching how we wait and serve now, how our light and lamp is burning right now. He's observing all that right now, even though we cannot see him. The springtime has so many echoes of the Garden of Eden, and we expect to hear the cry of our beloved any day now, to rise up and to come away. Let us make sure we are ready. Let us make sure we are eagerly anticipating our Lord, living for him in light of his return. Serve Christ first and highest above all else. Maranatha.